is in the is of hydra coidi this is a very small animal an example is procavia it's not common here procavia is mainly present in africa and middle east so very small animal now regarding the features of hydra coidi uh, commonly the, they are known as high higher axis higher axis they have a lot of body fur that is why the meaning well fur fur, fur means body hair mm -hmm. then rotund okay please get it okay then. and regarding their nature the rotund means actually see large and plump there is a meaning of the word rotten rotten large some part of the body shape is almost like a very well built animal that is why they are known as a, so you can call a higher axis are animals with a lot of body hair well built and tail is also very short here i will show that they have very short tail here you can see that so they do not have a larger tail or a longer tail very short tail large as well as well built body and body is uniformly covered with a lot of body hair that is the meaning of the first and f and they are commonly present in africa and middle east middle east means basically the gulf countries they are the middle east now uh, they have a poorly developed internal bulk internal temperature regulation that is one important feature of this animal and coming to their habitat they are mainly found in rocky terrain now, so if you uh, uh, look at the landscape of gulf countries like uh, saudi arabia or oman they are basically desert like countries with a lot of mountains so in this area this the higher axis or this procavia are commonly present here you can find the animal known as procavia now regarding the features the common name there are number of common names are the rock hyrax is one then cape hyrax is another thing then rock rabbit the, the overall body shape is somewhat similar to a rabbit that is why they are known as rock rabbit so these are the three common name rock hyrax rock rabbit and cape hyrax then you can see that the head is slightly pointed and neck is also short and ears these are the ear lobes and then they have a rounded ear lobes are also there so these are some of the morphological features then regarding the size of the animal they are not very big or not too small as a medium sized animal and they are mainly living on land that is why terrestrial animal and their distribution is i told you earlier is a na animal which is native native to africa that is original place of this animal is africa and most commonly they are present in the middle east or in the gulf countries now regarding another feature is that they are normally found at an elevation elevation means altitude altitude of 4200 meters 4200 meters for example if you go to munar the height of the munar is around 1500 meters so three times the height of munar so they are commonly present in regions which are higher which are of high or in high altitude regions of the middle east especially in mountain rock crevices crevices means gap small gaps which are present in the rocks are known as rock crevices so and the one advantage of living at such, such high altitude is that it will be helping the animal to escape from enemies or from predators then there is a disease known as leishmaniasis maybe you might have studied in plus 2 stand plus leishmania is a disease dangerous disease uh, once it was very common in african countries now it is somewhat controlled it is caused by a parasite so this is a reservoir. Reservoir means um, the uh, the parasite of Leishmania. And, uh, Leishmania may be present in the body of this animal, but to the animal, to the rock hyrax, it won't be producing any disease. But it can infect uh, this Leishmaniasis to other uh, 
other other animals that is why it is acting as a reservoir then incomplete thermoregulation as i told you earlier and it is most active in the morning as well as in the evening because they have a problem if they cannot control their body temperature properly like other mammals one feature of the warm blooded animal is that warm blooded animals always maintain a constant body temperature so that is one advantage of warm blooded animals but in the case of this animal this process is not very perfect so that is why uh, just like a rat reptiles they are mostly coming in the morning and also in the evening during the day time or during the mid day the temperature will be very high and during that time animal may not be very active so uh, that is that means it doesn't have a good uh, good control on the temperature regulation of its body that is why it is mentioned incomplete thermoregulation it's not very much capable of regulating the body temperature so that is why it is active during the morning and evening when temperature is more comfortable or not too cold then in case of males the testes are permanently abdominal so there is a, a, some feature that we can find only in few animal there is in most of them advanced mammals testes will be removed from the body and they are placed in a sac that is known by the name scrotal sac and there is a one purpose is that in order to develop uh, um, uh, the sperm the body the test is near a lower body temperature normally our body temperature in case of human beings is 37 the test is near a temperature of 34 or 35 so inside the body that temperature may not be possible so body is keeping it slightly away in a sac and that is a situation in most of the other animal mammals also but some mammals like elephant then sirenians sirenians is an aquatic mammal there and also in this hyrax we can we cannot find any outside testes testes is mostly present inside the abdomen or we call it as intra abdominal testes so because uh, they do not face the problem of this um, higher body temperature that is why uh, they can easily keep the testes inside the body so this is one animal where testis is present inside another example is the case of elephant so these are some of the important features of rock hyrax it's a very small medium sized animal uh, commonly present in middle east especially at a altitude of 4200 meters and then the order to which it belongs is known as the hyracoidea now we go to another order that is a sirenia in case of sirenia Uh, we have one example that is the dugong dugong is the example that we are have to find in case of dugong are popularly popularly known by the sea cows this is the dugong there has there is no similarity with the cow but still it is known as a sea cow uh, but maybe the overall body shape is as big as a cow that is why they are calling it as sea cow and it, there is another term called a sirenians then they have a large and fusy form the meaning of the word fusy form is means actually fusy form means both ends are pointed that is the uh, meaning of the word fusy form i will show this is the fusy form see this kind of body shape is known by the name see if the if both ends are pointed this is the shape of fusy form a shape like this one this is the fusy form shape both ends are pointed if such a kind of shape is there it is known as a fusy form so in case of sirenia we can find sea cow see here this end is pointed except this tail and the mouth end is or head end is also bluntly pointed advantage of fusy form shape is that it enables the animal to easily swim in water so that is the advantage of fusy form body shape we also use another term spindle shape spindle shape also means uh, both ends are pointed so sirenians are large animals with the fusy form body to reduce drag what is the meaning of the word drag when a, when an animal is swimming in water the water will be pushing uh, in the opposite direction and that pushing of water in opposite direction is what we call by the name resistance so in physics you may have sense something is moving in the direction there is an opposite force 
from either from air or from water. That opposite force which is applied on the animal is known as a resistance, otherwise known as a drag. So an animal which is uh, fusiform in shape, with pointed shape, you might have seen the shape of an aeroplane. So there the front ends are always pointed. So a pointed front end may be enabling the animal to easily move through water, reducing the drag. Drag means resistance. So that is the advantage of uh, body shape which are fusiform. Then they have a larger bonds, heavy bonds, heavy bonds, very powerful, strong heavy bonds. And that act as a ballast, ballast to, to counterweight the buoyancy of the blubber. Because in this animal, uh, we can find uh, the blubber is there. I will show you what is a blubber. Blubber is actually, this is the, what is the blubber? Inside the body of some animals, yeah, you can see that inside the body, See, this is a uh, type of blubber that we can find. There is a lot of fat will be present. I will show you a cross section. See, in, see, this is how the blubber may be present. See, uh, this is so. Uh, you take this case. See, below the skin there is a thick layer of fat. That thick layer of fat that we can find below the skin of this aquatic animal is known by the name blubber. And purpose of the blubber is that it is a fatty layer. Because of the presence of that blubber, it is giving buoyancy. Buoyancy means floating ability. So, the, but since there is, there, are, uh, there is a lot of blubber is there or a lot of fat is there, animal has a very high floating ability. So, the, uh, that is one that, so it can easily swim or it can easily float on the surface of water. But in order to swim effectively, some weight has to be needed. So, it, to, to give that weight, what the, uh, uh, the, the bonds of the animal are, are very strong and also very heavy. So, that will be acting as a counterweight. So, that is why the bonds are very strong as well as uh, uh, to act as a counterweight to reduce the buoyancy of the blubber. And they have a thin layer of blubber, constantly sensitive to temperature fluctuation, which cause migration when water temperature dip too low. And for example, this animal is widely uh, exhibiting migration or moving from one area to another area. And usually what happens is that when there is a difference in temperature or decrease in the uh, temperature of the sea water, it can be easily uh, dictated, sensed by the animal and animal can easily, uh, in its body mechanism or physiology of the animal will be changing. So, and that decrease in the temperature of the sea water will be producing a change in the, uh, change in the uh, uh, thickness of the blubber and that will be prompting or motivating the animal to undertake migration. So that is one, uh, one peculiarity that we can find in the case of sea cow or sirenia. So this is the animal that you can find, uh, it is also known by the name dugong. Then uh, uh, regarding the features of this animal, it has a uh, fusiform, fusiform means spindle shaped with no dorsal fin. See here you can say there is no dorsal fin, it is a mammal actually, it is not a fish. So there are no dorsal fin and no hind limbs, hind limbs means legs, we cannot find any legs and here this is the forelimbs are actually modified into flipper but here there are no hind limbs, there is a tail but it is not a modification of the hind limb, so hind limbs are absent in the use of dugong whereas forelimbs are present and it is largely dependent on seagrass, I will show you how a seagrass is there Sea grass uh, is not like our normal grass. See, this is the sea grass. So below the sea, we can find a lot of vegetation where the um, where the sunlight will be reaching. So this kind of small plants which are uh, growing below the water, especially in shallow water where sea sunlight can penetrate, is known by the sea grass. And dugong is mainly feeding on the sea grass. So, thus it is restricted to coastal habitat because uh, this seagrass cannot grow in deep water. 
only in shallow waters but sunlight can reach the sea grass can easily grow so the so this dugong will be mainly remaining in in sea which are nearer to the shore or in the coastal water so that is why the dugong will be primarily living near to sea near to the coast or in the coastal habitat because the there only the sea grass will be growing then uh, it is easily distinguished from manatees by its fluked dolphin like tail there is an another animal called manatees i will show you how a manatee is this is a manatee see this is another animal see so this is a, a manatee you can find that in case of manatee there is a difference in the tail this is a manatee so this is the uh, how a manatee will be appearing almost similar to dugong see that so this is how a dugong is the and this is the shape of a manatee the body shape are somewhat similar but if we look at the tail here it is the like the tail of a fish whereas in the case of manatee it is slightly different the tail is different here you can see so this is the type of tail that we can find i will show you some more pictures if uh, those kind of pictures are available see so in case of manatee we can find the tail is a strikingly different see this is one of the another picture there where you can find tail so tail is completely different so this is another case so the tail in case of this manatee as in the case of this dugong are slightly different so that is one important way by which we can easily distinguish or differentiate between manatee so in case of this dugong it has a fluked dolphin like tail then its snout is sharply downturned and snout means the front part of the body it is sharply downturned you can see that see this is a snout the snout is actually slightly downturned so that mouth will be on the underside so that is an adaptation for feeding in benthic sea grass benthic means growing at the bottom of the uh, bottom of an ocean or bottom of a river benthic means found on the sea bottom so the the sea grass will be primarily surviving on or living on growing on sea bottom and the plants which are growing in sea bottom are known as a benthic plants so it is an adaptation and for eating the sea grass the mouth is located on the under side of the body not at the front end of the body so there is another adaptation that molar teeth are simple and peg like unlike the molar teeth uh, uh, more elaborate um, uh, uh, of uh, in uh, more, more more elaborate molar dentition of the man here as i earlier told you the manatee is also very much similar to this uh, dugong but both are two distinct animal manatee is uh, another animal and dugong but in shape both may look very much similar but if you look at the mouth region we can find there are a lot of similar differences only the body shape is similar the flippers are similar but the tail and the mouth region of the manatee as well as that of a dugong are completely different so that is the case then dugong has been hunted for thousands of years for its meat as well as for the oil oil means from the blubber or from the fat present under the skin it can find a fat a liver of fat oil can be produced so for the meat of the dugong as well as for the oil obtained from it the people are hunting this animal for a long time now uh, now iucn you know what is an iucn Inter international union for conservation of nature which is an international body they are listing as a vulnerable to extinction the category is the vulnerable to extinction means it can get extinct right now the population of this dugong is very very, very low so that there is a strong possibility that unless protective measures are taken the animal may get completely extinct from the world then there is a cites convention of international trade on on endangered species that is a cites and they are banning trade on this derived derived means and those products which are obtained from dugong are known as a derived products and the normal lifespan of this animal is 70 years 
and uh, and uh, and they have also a very slow rate of reproduction and so that if there is the animal got extinct it takes another 20 or 40 years to replace with another species but because of a long reproductive uh, long lifespan the young may be growing very slowly it takes a lot of years to reach sexual maturity so that is a problem if animals with a long lifespan are getting extinct so uh, and because of this reason there is a strong vulnerability vulnerability means chance for extinction of this animal so that is the case with the dugong so this is the animal you have to study then dugong is belonging to the order sirenia now we have another order that is uh, that next order is perisodactyla under the perisodactyla the the topic the, the animal that we have to study is rhinoceros now in case of rhinoceros you have all studied the rhinoceros this is the rhinoceros and this rhinoceros is actually coming under the order perisodactyla so what is the peculiarity of this perisodactyla is that they possess either one or three hoofed toes one or one hoof, hoof or three hoofed toes on each hind foot i will show you how this uh, uh, <coughs> see in case of perisodactyla their feet will be having either this is how it will be appearing so this is the feet of a perisodactyla in most of the perisodactyla there will be either one feet or one three toes or one toe that is the meaning of the word peri that, that is why we call it old two old toed animals old old means one three x so either one toe or three toes the fingers or on the feet are known as toes so this animal will be possessing either one toe or three toes so this here you can find that this is the old toe see either one toe or three toe so this is the nature of the perisodactyla and under this order animals like horses asses uh, zebras and tapir and rhinoceros are all coming under the order perisodactyla and the animal that we have to study is the rhinoceros now rhinoceros is an extended ex there are five extended species you know what is an extinct species animals which are dead and were living in the past are known as an extinct animal extinct means presently living animals which are living in the present are known as an extinct species so there are five extinct species that means there are five species of rhinoceros which are still living in the world and two of the living extinct species are native to africa and three of the extended species or living species are extinct uh, are uh, native to southern asia so total five species are there and they have a herbivorous diet you know that uh, rhinoceros is not a meat eating animal or a carnivorous animal it is a plant eating animal that is why it is a herbivore and their brain is very small see it is a very big animal but it has a small brain now the, our brain is around 1600 mm and that is the capacity, capacity of our brain so the brain of a rhinoceros is only one for the size of a human brain so it's a very small brain compared to I mean, the size is very big then uh, other thing is that it, the, the, it has a horn and either one horn may be present or sometimes two horn may be present which is actually a thick protective skin from the layers of collagen positioned in a lattice structure see this actually this horn is actually produced from the protective skin and hair and they have modified into a horn like structure in some rhinoceros we can find only one horn in some rhinoceros we can find two horns so this is how the uh, rhinoceros may be appearing maybe one horn rhinoceros are the and similarly two horned rhinoceros are the then uh, rhinoceros are killed by some poachers who are poachers people who are killing and capturing animal they are known as a poachers and uh, rhinoceros are killed by poachers for their horns because 
one advantage of the horn is that as in the use of elephant the horns are very useful in making lot of ornamental structures because uh, because of their uh, special nature the tusk of an elephant as well as horn of this rhinoceros can be used for carving purpose or for making lot of ornaments or other kinds of product and they are also used in traditional medicine in african countries so both african species and the sumatran rhinoceros there is a rhinoceros in indonesia that is known as a sumatran rhinoceros they have two horns see this is a two horned rhinoceros then uh, while indian rhinoceros and the javan rhinoceros have a single horn i will show you how a javan rhinoceros is appearing see this is the picture of a javan rhinoceros see this is the javan rhinoceros you can see that this is the this is the javan rhinoceros actually so it has a only single horn so this is the javan rhinoceros only single horn will be there so that is a peculiarity of this of indian and the indian rhinoceros also the i will show you where in in india like we can find indian rhinoceros in which place in india indian rhinoceros is is present can you say the sanctuary where indian rhinoceros are present nobody knows have you heard about kasiranga where is kasiranga 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 is in kashmir or in some other state kasiranga is in northeast kasiranga is a very famous uh, sanctuary in india so this is the indian rhinoceros you can see that indian rhinoceros this is the indian rhinoceros i will show you kasiranga national park is a very famous national park is the kasiranga national park and this is the indian rhinoceros that we can find in kasiranga national park very large animal very gigantic animal but at the same time it is a herbivorous animal so so kasiranga is a very very well famous for the presence of this indian rhinoceros so both african species as sumatran species are two horn while indian and javan rhinoceros have only one horn then i use here as i already told you they list uh, identifies a black javan and sumatran rhinoceros as critically endangered critically endangered means they are not very common that is the meaning of the word critically there is endangered critically and endangered vulnerable to extinction vulnerable to extinction means their uh, their population is very small that is why it is known as a so in case of critically endangered the population may be still smaller but um, no, not as smaller as in the case of vulnerable to extinction so these are the main features of rhinoceros then this is a sumatran rhinoceros then uh, aside from sumatran rhinoceros they are nearly or completely hairless see this animal are just like elephant they do not have lot of body hair one feature of the mammals is that mammals are animals which are covered with a lot of body hair but in case of this uh, uh, sumatran and javan rhinoceros etc we cannot find much, uh, body is almost hairless except for the tail tip and ear fringes here you can find that only on the tail and on the ear we can find some amount of hair uh, hairs so that is the here also you can find some amount of hair so except for the tail tip and ear margins some fos uh, uh, the, the animal is mostly hairless but if you look at the fossil species the fossil species of rhinoceros are thickly covered with the hair so the loss of body hair is a recent adaptation that we can find in case of rhinoceros maybe the fossil species may be living at a time when the earth was more colder then rhinoceros have a poor eyesight see you can see that there is a big animal but eyes are very small so it's a very big animal but poor eyesight but they have a very acute sense of smell as well as acute sense of hearing so there is one to two unique adaptation rhinoceros are possessing they are very good in uh, uh, sensing 
and that's uh, 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 sensing um, here they have very good in hearing and also detecting smell that most prefer to avoid humans but males and females with, with calms may charge with a little provocation calms males and females with the calms means babies so when a male and rhinoceros a female i know a rhinoceros who is in company with the children and human beings or other animals are going near they have a higher chance of attacking them without any provocation the black rhinoceros can attain a speed of about 45 km per hour so it's a speed of a normal car and even in thick brush brush and can turn rapidly after missing a child that is it can quite fast it can attack you very fast even though animal is very large well sized very, very well built animal it can easily turn and come back to you very fast so it is a very ferocious aggressive animal and also very dangerous so this is the features of this uh, uh, the so rhinoceros we have to understand they belong to perissodactyla a uh, popular known as old toed animals either one toe or three toes are there and these are the animals which are present in the perissodactyla and the example that we have studying is rhinoceros three five species of rhinoceros are there and some are listed in the iuc and also our next order is actually the camel see so camel belongs to aritto aritto aritio now in case of aritio i will show you this aho aritio dactyla is the so this is the aritio dactyla see this is the camel see you look at the feet of the animal see this is the camel so only two toes are there see here also you can find only two toes so in case of horse, we can find three toes or one toe. So that is the difference between Aritodactyla and Perissodactyla. So we call it as even toed, even toed animals, even toed. That is two feet, two toes are there or four toes are there. In most of the case, they have only two toes. So that is the feature of this is also Aritodactyla, it's a pig. So these are the animals which are exhibiting. Uh, two toes or four toes so that is why they are belonging to aritodactyla aritodactyla you can find also there so they are even toed animals so that is so in this example we have to find one example that is the case of uh, what is known as the uh, example that we are going to study here is the ca camel camellius Camellius means the camel, that is the camellius. Now this is the camellius, different species of camels are there. This is the most popular type of camel or Arabian camel. This is the Bactrian camel, common in colder countries like Mongolia. So it's a, a, with a highly covered with a lot of body hair. So in case of camel, this is another camel, Bactrian camel. You can find two humps are there. So, so, three species of camels are the Bactrian camel is the. So, we will see what are the features of this animal. They, the the adult are known as a bear. The bear uh, possesses a distinctive fatty deposit known as hump on its back. So, this is the how these are the body hump, and this body humps are actually filled with or a lot of body fat. So that is it. Uh, that is how the humps are present on the on the back of the body. And camels have been domesticated and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and kept as a livestock. They are providing food, milk, just like cow for Indians. The the camel is important for people living in desert countries. They are getting uh, the milk from camel and also meat from camel and also textiles from camel the body hair is used for producing fiber etc so uh, in case of in the case of camel uh, for and people living in desert countries 
this is a vital means of transport for pa passenger for example the camels are long used by people living in uh, desert countries as a means for transportation so people are uh, climbing on the surface of the back of the camel and can then camel can take them very long distance so that is a one advantage of camel so it is a multi purpose uh, multi -purpose, they, they sometimes we call it the ship of the desert why people call camel as the ships of the desert because they uh, they are mainly used as a transport uh, animal they can take animal uh, people from one area to another area that's why they are, are used as ships of the desert so one humped dromedary this is a common this animal is known as a one humped dromedary so that makes up 94 percent of the world camel population so there are different species are there and majority are belonging to this one humped camel or dromedary camel then uh, two humped bactrian camel are making up uh, say only six percentage so this is the bactrian camel the second one is the bactrian camel then the wild bactrian camel is a separate species and that is this is a wild bactrian camel and and it, is, and it is a separate and is now very critically endangered. Critically endangered means very small population is there. So Arabian camel popularly known as dromedary, scientific name is Camelus dromedarus. They has a only one back hub. While the domesticated Bactrian camel, Camel Camellius bactrianus and the wild Bactrian camel, Camellius ferus, they have two body humps. This is the wild Bactrian camel, they possess two body humps. Then the upper lip is uh, split into two sections that move independently. See here if you look at the camel, you can see that the upper lip, there is a, that is at the top of the upper lip there is a gap and that is split into two separate regions. That is one peculiarity of the camel, upper lip is split into two sections and each lip can move independently. The eyelashes protect the eyes from blowing sand. Here you can find that these eyes are covered with a long body, a long hairs are the that will be protecting the eye from fast flowing or fast, fast blowing wind. So that is the one feature of the eyes and nostrils can be cusped and there will be see in the nose, the nose can be shut, nose can be closed using a valvular nose to the <coughs> so that is one feature of the nostril it can be the nostrils are provided with the valves which can be closed so dromedary has horny pads on its chest and knees that protect it from seeing see at the lower uh, on the uh, see here you can see that below the feet there are certain, uh, uh, certain horny pads are there horny pads means very thick pads are sir, skin pads are there that will be protecting the animal from the heat of the sand. And Bactrian camel lacks, Bactrian camel will be mainly living in, this is the Bactrian camel, and they are mainly living in colder countries like Mongolia. So there they do not have this uh, shoe like uh, feet. Then uh, camels do not walk on their hoops. On each leg, like the weight is borne on two large toes. They are spread apart to keep animal from sinking into the sand. See, I will show you how the feet of a camel is there. So this is the nature of the feet, see. So this is how the feet of a camel is. See, this is the nature of the chameleon feet, see. Because of the, uh, these two toes which are spread like that, the, the, the leg will not sink into the sand. So that is the advantage of feet like this with the two toes. So that is one peculiarity of the camel and because of this kind of toes, the each leg which is weight is borne on two large toes spread apart to keep animal from sinking into the sand. Then dromedaries have a soft wide spreading pad, pad for walking on the sand. That is a back chain camel. Then in severe heat, camel survives for four to seven days without drinking. That is one important feature of the camel. Even without drinking water, a camel can eat silly leaf for up to one week. Then it can go ten months without drinking at all. And if it is not working and forage, because that without drinking any water, 
a camel can go even up to 10 months but they will be eating something and from the food they are eating they will be getting some water so body rehydrates within minutes of a long drink absorbing 100 liters of water that is that is another capacity a camel can drink 100 liters of water in 5 to 10 minutes so when water is available camel drinks a lot of water and store this water so a, ca ca a thirsty camel can reduce its urine output to one fifth of its normal volume that is uh, if animal is feeling that there is no water availability what it is normally doing is that it will be reducing the production of the urine from the normal uh, urine output it can reduce the normal uh, urine output by one fifth or it can only 80 percent of the urine it can prevent so that is another uh, uh, peculiarity of the camel and it is producing dry feces so that very little water will be lost through the urine as well as through the feces then it is not sweating that is another peculiarity so camel is well adapted to live in on, on desert no sweating no very little urine is produced and they can survive without water for weeks or months so these are all uh, then fine woolly coat insulate the body is another peculiarity that is uh, helping the animal and camel can allow its body temperature rise to 41 degree so there is for example normally the temperature of most of the mammal will be around 37 or 38 but and after if our body temperature is increasing above 37 what our body is doing our body will start producing sweat and sweat will be uh, evaporating and that evaporation of sweat will be recooling our body so that is how our body in most of the mammals will be working but in case of camel the camel will not sweat it can raise its body temperature up to 41 degree so even if even if the environmental temperature is very high the camel will not be sweating it will be slightly raising its body temperature only if the body temperature reaches 41 degrees centigrade or 106 Fahrenheit it starts sweating so that is another unique adaptation the camel is possessing when food is plentiful camel over overeat that is the overeat it has the capacity of overeating as well over drinking the 100 liters of water it can drink and storing lot of fat in one area on the back and that is forming the hump so these are the features of the camel and uh, that is why camel is very well adapted to live in desert it is known as a sheep of the desert it is a highly useful animal so uh, for the people living in uh, desert countries or in the middle east camel is forming an important part of the life